StarCast 5, presented by CarShield, July 29th to 31st in Nashville, Tennessee at the Nashville Fairgrounds. Loaded with stage shows including Renee Paquette's Sessions with the American Dragon, Brian Danielson, Soraya, Turning the Page, The Horsemen reunite on stage for one last ride, and Bret Hart's look back at 30 years later on his SummerSlam Classic. And of course, StarCast will be capped off by Ric Flair's Last Match. Follow the story leading up to the last match over at RicFlair'sLastMatch.com. Tickets and information available at StarCast.com. All right, the uh, Vince McMahon story, another story in the Wall Street Journal with a few more details on what happened leading to Vince resigning from WWE. Well, I mean, I guess the big thing is is that uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission and federal prosecutors have launched inquiries into the payments made by Vince McMahon to, to settle the allegations of sexual misconduct. Um, so that is the main reason um, that they claim that Vince, uh, you know, uh, resigned from the company. Um, uh, let's see, the um, WWE disclosed the inquiries in the filing. So it's basically... This is not new news in the sense that it was in that filing that we talked about this morning, the one where they talked about all of the the fourteen point six million and everything like that. So um, that was their story. So it really isn't anything new, but it's just they wrote it and and they had a they didn't really have like uh, anything other than that in the story. So the Vince stuff we talked about, and there's really not anything else, you know on the show that we did earlier today. So if you want. You know, the, the stuff on that, there really isn't anything of um, major concern that happened uh, regarding that story that we didn't already talk about at all kind of broke this morning. So um, any other thoughts on that, uh, given time? Uh, not really. Just trying to get everything cleared up as to why he's repaying this this money to the company if allegedly this money came out of his own personal funds. The, the best that... Uh, Anybody is, is speculated is that uh, he paid the fines and then the, uh, the, 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 essentially fines. reimbursed himself in one way or the other and now has to pay that back, which... How would he uh, reimburse himself? Yeah, well, you know, I don't know. I, I, I mean, he used his own money and then expensed it, and then the company paid him back, and now he has to pay back the company. Yeah, I don't think that that's what happened, but it's if it did, there, there, if, it, if that happened, um, it would be disastrous for him and for everyone i think that they just said that it was because it it should have been it, because it should have been company money because it was company stuff um that by not you know like by not disclosing it they um they basically were um i don't say like defrauding the books but something something like that i mean i guess you know because obviously that's why there's a well yeah but i mean it was his own allegedly he wrote his own check so what would that have to do with the company that's because the thing it, I can't get past. Because it should have been, um, it should have been company money because it had to do with the company. You know, you you you're, uh, like, you're basically defrauding the company books by writing a personal check for something that was actually related to the company. I think that that's what it is. That's how it was pretty much explained to me. But. So what you're saying is that he they should have used company money for the NDAs, but because um, they didn't and he did, now he has to pay the company back, even though the company spent no, zero it's not, it's dollars. Not no, 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 no. The, the the money that he has to pay the company back is essentially the money that has not been paid yet. You know, there's some of the some of these NDAs. It's not like he just wrote somebody a check for, um, you know, like a million dollars. It would be like I'm going to pay you three hundred thousand uh, dollars a year for the next. You know, or, or you know, two hundred fifty thousand a year. Let's say for the next four years, and some of that money is still yet to be paid. So that you're saying is what he's paying the company. So he still owes twelve million dollars. No, I don't know how much he still owes. Um, that I don't. That I don't know. Um, you know, it's not going to be that much because most. You know, but I don't. I don't know. I don't know like the terms of the payment or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, but there is still, I mean, like the one that broke the case, the original one, the paralegal woman, um, you know, she was being paid for the next several years. So the, I, there's, so most of, or much of that money has yet to be, you know, it's $3 million thing. Well, sure. But in, in theory, I mean, those payments should be coming from Vince, from his bank account. Right. But since it had to do with the company, um, it should be, um, it should be part of the company books. 
So that's the key is that uh, it was not, um, you know, listing the it was not part of the company books. So it's defrauding the it, it's essentially defrauding the, um, you know, profit loss and everything like that by Vince using his own money hmm. for company affairs affairs. So, um, yeah. in um, yeah, that's pretty much it, though. Um, there's not. Uh, well, the stock today closed at seventy one eighty one. So at the end of the day, it was up eight point four four percent, five dollars and fifty nine cents a share, and so uh, ended up in the green. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because everybody thinks that they're selling. So everybody wants you know the stock's going to do a run up now um, until you know either they uh, either they don't sell at all or they do sell. But um, you know, the different there had already been talk on the street. Um, last week, because I had actually heard, um, you know, because because the stock was not tanking or anything like that, even after this, after the second story, and somebody said, well, there's a lot of talk about uh, a sale going on, so the stock's going to do, um, the stock's going to be okay, and then when this happened, and Vince divested himself, the idea, or not divested himself, but Vince quit, the idea was is that he's probably going to have to uh, divest himself. And to do that because it's you know his his stock his stock I believe is worth right at about two billion dollars that you know if you're going to spend two billion on the company you're going to buy at least if nothing else controlling interest in the company and the idea is is that if that's going to happen then the value of the stock goes you know is going to be way up so um, you know that's that's basically the gist of of the whole thing and there's been a lot of different talk of. You know who's going to buy? You know analysts talking. Um, Brandon Ross had uh, a bunch. I mean, it's it's the you know NBC Universal, um, Amazon. Um, I'm trying to remember the other ones. There's uh, you know there's a, there's a a list of uh, of those that are you know um, potential buyers, including um, what was the one Endeavor, which owns UFC. With the idea that you know owning both WWE and UFC would be something, and because they're, you know, if it was a couple of years ago, Endeavor was deep, deep, deep in the red, but um, now they're they're starting to make money, and UFC is insanely profitable as WWE is. Um, but the idea of that that would be they would be in great shape owning both, and they could do, um, you know, work media rights and things like that, um, you know, and. Uh, you know, it would be NBCU, you know, Comcast would be um, the favorite in most people's cases. And then they could get SmackDown back, um, you know, and things like that. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.